Hey there everyone, welcome back to another video. Kovac here, and for this one I'll be giving a guide for the new Burning Steps Pet Battle Dungeon inside of the Black Rock Mountain. The uh, hardcore mode to be exact, so no bandages or anything like that allowed. So uh, hopefully this will help out anybody who may be struggling with it. Uh, there are a couple of guides out, and I've meant to get a guide of my, of my own out as well, but... This is my second time trying to record. I did try to record it once before, but I kind of screwed up. So I had to start over. Uh, one screw up can make you have to start over with some of these battles anyway. So that's all it took and I had to unfortunately stop the recording. So hopefully we will not have that same result happen again. <laughs> uh, the hardest part of the dungeon definitely is the very last boss, that is for sure. Um, as far as it, as far as difficulty goes, I don't think it's, oh, actually I think it might be the toughest one there is. I meant to say, um, as far as, you know, time length goes, I think this might be the quickest one. So our first competitor is going to be Haru Cloudwatcher right here. So we'll go ahead and hop into it. For this, you kind of need the Macabre Marionette. It's one of the very few times where Dead Man's Party will actually come in handy. Versus the little Dragonkin right here. And then the back two pets could pretty much be any mechanical pet. Preferably ones that can do like inflation like the knockoff bling or the uh, little bling. I have the Speed Balance Cogblade Raptor here just because I kind of need little bling for later on. So. Yeah, obviously right here you're just going to go into Dead Man's Party and to uh, Macabre Maracas until the dragon goes down. Pretty straightforward stuff. <clears throat> I like the little new remodel that they gave the uh, Macabre Marionette. I know it's been out for a while, but I don't really use this pet a whole lot, so I don't really notice it a whole bunch. So, one more maraca, and it will go down. He'll go ahead and throw another howl on you. Now, from here, you can basically just go for another dead man's party, I suppose. He's just going to go for Black Claw into his usual hunting parties. I don't know why he's going for that first, but it's whatever. You'll continue on with your dead man's party, and then you'll probably get the last one in, and then your uh, maraca, well, macabre marionette should go down. And then from there, I think, uh, just go ahead and bring in your knockoff bling or little bling if you have that instead. Either or is suitable, I think. Actually, no, I think you might need the little bling for a little while later. I'm not entirely sure on that. But um, both of them are pretty great for this particular scenario. Uh, let's go ahead and throw down the booby trap presence, because why not? I mean, it is extra damage after all, am I right? Okay, let's go for another make it rain. What? Only one of them landed. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Alright, whatever. We're just going to go for an inflation now. The next raptor isn't all that different. The only difference is, I think, is that it has Ren instead of Strike. Yeah. So, it's going to be pretty straightforward. You already got the little Make It Rain dot up. So, just keep using Inflation. <clears throat> and he should go down. There goes down my knockoff bling. Out comes my Cogblade Raptor. I'm pretty sure a batter will take him out the rest of the way. And there we go. It's actually a pretty easy fight. As well as the little, I guess you can consider them uh, trash fights. They're kind of random too. Like right here we've got Rampage. I've never gone against them before, but I mean it's just a beast. There are also like a wolf, there's a pig. There's a little humanoid too. Let's see, what do you have? Rampage, Thrash, Bash, and Banana Barrage. Okay, well normally this is where I would pop the next team. I'm sure it'll be just fine. I mean, I will have to change out my knockoff bling, obviously. Because it has died. But, yeah, I don't think Rampage will be that big of a deal. 
I think Rampage might be a reference to, you know, the Rampage movie. Because it looks just like that one gorilla. <clears throat> Let's see. I have Dibbler right there. I can't use Dibbler. Um, can I just use one of these? So I don't think I have that in one of the teams. Okay, let's just try this. Pretty much all mechanicals, I would say, um, pretty much will work on whatever the trash pit comes out as. Like I said, it's kind of random, so can't really prepare for it. Just assume that most of the time it probably will be a beast type. If not Rampage, it might be the wolf that has like, uh, it has, it has Cyclone, I think, in its own way to buff it too. Oh, he went for Bash second. What? That's annoying. Oh, well, let's just go for Feathered Frenzy then, so I take less damage from all of that. Okay, let's go for Metal Fist right here. Boom. <clears throat> Just trying to deal as much damage to him as I can. Even if this entangling roots isn't going to be buffed in damage, should be fine. Doesn't do all that much damage, it's just mainly his health. Alright, he might go for a. Aw, I was kind of hoping he would go for a bash, that way he would waste it. Oh well. I think right here we could just go ahead and bring in the Black Fuse Bombling. As soon as I get close to dying, I'll just go ahead and pop and explode. It'll do a lot of damage because of my high health pool. Alright, let's just go for a Flame Jet. It does the same amount of damage as Zap, but it has the extra chance of uh, getting that little dot right there. That's pretty nice. Like I said, as soon as I get close to dying, I will go ahead and pop the explode. Actually, I think I can go ahead and do it now. Because he'll get me pretty close to dead here. And, oh, it actually killed him. 650 was the magic number. And there we go. Rampage wasn't that big of a deal. Even though, uh, <clears throat> that was the first time going against him. Alright, next up we have Theron's Sky Song, which I believe, if I remember correctly, he only has two pets. Both of them are mechanical, so you will need an Apocalypse pet of some sort, preferably a beetle. There is the Fire Beetle and Lava Beetle, basically the same thing. I highly recommend those. Those are very easy to get wild-caught pets, so there's that. Next pet can be a, well, pretty much any elemental that has pretty high burst. The Ravenous Pridling just so happens to have that high burst with elemental damage as well as life exchange, which will come in handy. And then uh, the third pet can pretty much be any other uh, elemental pet. I just have root in this spot. Just something to survive the, um, to outlive the, uh, the apocalypse. That's what it's there for. So let's just go ahead and hop right into it. Starting out with your beetle, of course. I'm going to go straight into an apocalypse because <clears throat> it is a 15, what, 15 round duration or something like that. Yeah, so within this time frame you want to take down this guy as quickly as possible. He has an extra chance to crit thanks to that, but he also has his unstable engineering meaning that his uh, hit chance is decreased. So you may get lucky and he'll just miss a whole bunch. From here, you just want to pretty much spam Seath, I guess, until he gets pretty, well, not him, but you get pretty low in health. Then you can go ahead and pop a life exchange. I think I'll go ahead and do it now, since he's going to hit me anyway. Ooh, very good time. Okay, let's keep going for our attacks here. Ooh, there goes another crit. All right. Ooh, there goes another one, but that's his little overcharge right there. And down would go. That is perfectly fine. As long as we take out logic before the apocalypse goes off, we'll be in a pretty great spot. So let's just keep going for iron barks. He's not going to be doing that much damage to you anyway because your little iron bark will be up. So that'll be perfectly fine. Just want to keep spamming your iron barks at this point. 
making sure that he goes down before that goes off and then it'll be pretty great so one more iron bark will go down now the apocalypse will not cancel out his his little um uh, what's it called his mechanical racial that's what it is so you will have to clean that up but the fire beetle will have no problem doing that uh, he will swap you out right there so there's no point in swapping or whatever so from here you can just go for a cauterize Ooh, very nice time to cauterize by the way since he crit apocalypse will take him out there goes his mech racial and just go for a couple burns pretty simple stuff right there <clears throat> One more burn to take out math, and there we go. Alright, pretty straightforward stuff too, as long as you have the appropriate pets, which, I mean, like I said, it's not hard to get a beetle. And it looks like we've got Splint and Tempton. Yeah, these trash pets right here are kind of random. Uh, besides this rat and Splint, there is also a pig named Wilbur, funny enough. And then, um... I guess another pet named Ralph. That might be a turtle. I don't remember. I do remember a turtle of some sort. But these pets right here should do fine against pretty much anything. So versus Splint. I think that um, Icky might be able to solo him. I don't really remember. But we'll find out. Uh, because I do remember taking out one of these guys with only... My little icky here alone. Uh, let's see. Well, that's unfortunate. He went for Burrow right off the bat. I would have hoped that he went for Whirlwind first. Let's just go ahead and reapply that. He doesn't hit very hard. He is pretty speedy, but I mean, I have all flying types, so it really doesn't matter. Just hopefully he doesn't knock me below my racial or anything like that. Should be fine. Alright, boom, boom, and boom. Alright, I am below my racial now. It's just going to go for a burrow. I'm pretty sure I can kill him as long as that shattered defense is up. And yeah, it looks like Icky will be able to solo splint alone. There we go. <clears throat> now Temp then. I don't really remember what he has in store. It's not even showing his abilities, but it's just a rat, so shouldn't be anything to really worry about, I don't think. Um, I'm assuming we could just use the same pets, right? Yeah, I believe so. I think he's just going to go for a Vengeance, which is one of the worst abilities in the game. Look at there. Alright, let's go for a Flock now. Okay, ooh, that's actually going to give me extra damage. Oh, he killed me, though. That sucked. A lot. Alright, Dire Beak Hatchling, here we go. Let's go ahead and get that big damage in. <laughs> 900 damage, to be exact. Aw, oh, but that was a pretty great time for Vengeance right there. Alright, let's go ahead and armor up with Iron Skin. And, uh, pretty should be pretty much straightforward from here. Basically, almost all of these trash pets, or maybe all but one, you can pretty much use these uh, birds with Flock and Black Claw. I just have Foul Feather back there, and then obviously Icky, and threw in the Dire Beak Hatchling just for some extra potency. And they will get the job done. And down he goes. Nice. <laughs> The trash pets are pretty much the easiest part of the dungeon, I would say. Alright, next up we have this guy. So I believe, if I remember correctly, yeah, we have to move on to this team, which you will need another Apocalypse user, preferably a beetle, like I said. Uh, the first match was a fire beetle. This one is a lava beetle. Imperial Silkworm comes in very in handy for this battle. You want to have that out first, and then we have the experimental roach for the humanoid, as you'll see in just a second. Now this is where I screwed up in the pet battle dungeon, so hopefully I do not recreate that. But uh, basically, versus this guy, you're just going to be whittling him down slowly but surely. 
He can't really do anything to you. He does all weak damage. He does have a trap, but it does weak damage you, and you will not get stunned thanks to you being a critter. He will try to fade out, but he can't thanks to your little sticky goo right there. This is pretty nice to get a couple sleeps, I guess. It doesn't really do much for you because, I mean, all he can do is spam either Immolation or uh, Magma Trap right there. So, as long as you make sure the goo is on him before he uses Fade, uh, you'll just be able to whittle him down, like I said. <clears throat> it is a pretty slow process, but you will kill him eventually. Alright, let's just keep going for consume. So those high-end Mothus will make this go by a little quicker. One thing you really don't want to do is let that goo fall off, otherwise it will uh, be pretty bad. Now the part where I screwed up at is where after you kill off uh, Frill here, he will bring in his humanoid, which doesn't hit all that hard, but has quite a bit of health. Uh, you want to swap into your beetle immediately and throw up apocalypse and go into the experimental roach uh, that's where i screwed up at and i kind of did it a little too late and i ended up losing which was pretty unfortunate but it's whatever just as long as we don't do that again all right let's go for a moth dust and he should go down right here oh, almost all right well he will definitely go down to a consume all right, so yeah, right here, want to go into your beetle right away. He'll go for a clobber, but you're all critters anyway, so he's not going to be able to stun you. Go for an apocalypse, and then go straight into your roach. That way you can do as much damage to him as you can. Go for a stamp, I mean, I was about to say stampede. It's pretty much the same thing. It's a uh, swarm into disease bites, and that should bring him down pretty swiftly. <clears throat> and then obviously save the apocalypse for wanderer back there he will not be able to survive it he is not a mechanical nor an undead so he will go down easy money all right let's go for our disease bites right here he cannot stun us obviously he can do pretty decent damage i guess with his mighty charge and stuff right there but it's not going to be doing a whole lot um, right here, we can either go for disease bites or keep going for swarm. I reckon we can just keep going for swarm. As long as we take out Ruddy, then we'll be fine. Alrighty, down goes your roach. So from here, I don't think it matters who you bring in be completely honest uh, let's just go ahead and bring in the lava beetle since he is faster I think he does a little bit more damage than the silkworm so obviously let's go for a burn to take advantage of that oh it crit too all right well the crit definitely wasn't necessary but it sure did help so from here basically just have to survive the rest of the couple turns of apocalypse until that goes off um, I think I'm going to go ahead and go into the Silkworm, because as long as the beetle survives, then I'll be good, because Apocalypse cannot take out cockroaches or beetles. <clears throat> so, let's just go for a mock dust. really doesn't matter what we do, to be honest. Oh, we went to sleep. Okay, nice. Well, uh, from there, let's just go into the beetle, and go for a cauterize. GG's. Boom, boom. Uh, never thought uh, Apocalypse would come in handy until uh, you come into this pet battle dungeon. <clears throat> Alright, next up we have Zuna Skull Crush, which I believe, if I remember correctly, is one of the tougher uh, opponents that you will face in here, but surprisingly this team will do very well. You, you're going to want Gauze Rookie, the Elusive Skimmer, which is uh, from Nazmir, it is a wild caught. And then the Xandlari Shin Chopper. You'll see that Aura of Gonk will come in very much in handy later on. Obviously, you're going to want to want run uh, Geyser and Whirlpool. 
along with Stampede on Elusive Skimmer, as you'll see in just a moment. Alrighty, so from here you want to go straight into Geyser and immediately swap into your Skimmer. He's just going to set up his Toxic Fumes right there. All right, there goes his little leech seed. We really don't care. We're gonna go ahead and throw up a whirlpool straight into a stampede, then watch the magic happen. That will go off, hit him and stun him. He will swap out, but the next pet that he swaps in is going to not only get hit by this stampede, but take extra damage from this whirlpool. So there we go. Still locked in the stampede right here. He'll go ahead and change the weather. From here, I believe you just go ahead and try to finish off his Fosling. Yes, yeah, finish off Fosling. Uh, from here, I believe just go for a stampede. That way you have the extra, uh, well, not extra damage, but the shatter debuff right there. There we go. He'll go ahead and pop his Toxic Fumes. Now you go ahead and bring back in Gauss Rookie, who is faster because most of them are slow. And just go for your Swallow You Holes. He'll probably go for his Leech Seed. It really doesn't matter. It's a dot. Not going to do a whole lot of damage to you. There we go. Alright, now from here, you want to keep going for, I think, Bites until you get around to close to dying, I think. Is that right? I think he goes with Sludge Claw first. I don't remember. Let's go for Geyser just to be safe. I'm pretty sure he does. It does double damage if you are poisoned. It really doesn't matter because Geyser does have a pretty uh, long while before it goes off anyway. Okay, there goes Sludge Claw right there. Alright, so now from here, you just want to go for your... Actually... Uh, you want to go for Aura of Gonk first, that's right, because that way you get the most healing out of it. Now you go for your Hunting Party. You'll get the healing from that, as well as the Geyser, and it will stun him, of course. There we go. And now we'll just go for our Claws right here. Boom, boom. And then one more Claw should get the job done. Pretty straightforward stuff. As long as you have the right pets, of course, as I've said before. Alrighty, and we're almost finished with the dungeon. Alright, so next up, we have Tasha Riley. Yeah, so here we go. Let's go ahead and hop into this one. Have the Chitter Spine Skitterling, the SS Breed, of course. Um, I don't know if you can do this with the Power Speed or Speed Balance. Uh, this is where a little bling will come in handy, like I said earlier, and then you have the Dark Moon Tonk, which is pretty much going to be your finisher. So here you want to go for Black Claw first, straight into a swarm. <clears throat> Just trying to burst down this undead as quickly as possible. He's just going to set up a bunch of different stuff. He's got a little uh, dot right there with Bray's ally. This little bomb thing right there. Well, you will be able to take him down right here. That way he'll do less damage on this turn. <clears throat> uh, hopefully your Chitter Spine won't die right here. Nice, it did not die. Okay, I think you just want to go ahead and lock yourself into another Swarm, if I remember correctly. Or maybe I should have maybe placed a Black Claw on one of the pets. I don't entirely remember. But I think Swarm's a pretty great option too. It's gonna go ahead and waste a Howl right there, which was not very smart. Not in the very least. Let's go ahead and go for extra plating. He will go straight into a Surge of Power. It's not going to do all that much damage, especially since he wastes his Howl under almost dead Skitterling right there. We're gonna go ahead and go into Inflation here now. <clears throat> it pretty much should be just a straightforward walk in the park from here. Oh, there goes another uh, Howl right there, but he hasn't used Nether Blast not once, so 
It's not going to do a whole lot of damage. All right, let's go for another make it rain. Wow, all of them missed. Oh, that really sucked. Uh, that is definitely not what you want to have happen. That is for sure. But I don't think it'll matter all that much. I mean, it sucks that all of them missed despite having an 80% hit chance, but it is what it is. Still should be able to walk away with a W. Alright, there goes that. Won't be able to do anything right here anyway, giving us plenty of time to take him down. Alright, let's go ahead and go for the Mega Rain here. And then lastly, we have Glitzy, his little dragonkin. So from here, we're just going to go straight into inflation. <coughs> deal as much damage to him as possible all right we'll get up another inflation go ahead and waste his dragon racial on our almost dead little bling he does have the shattered defenses up on him now he got a little dot rolling so from here basically just do as much damage as you can go for shock and awe ba boom and as soon as you get him really low in health, go ahead and pop that Ion Cannon. I don't think we can do it quite yet, but we can definitely do it now. And that's GG. Nothing he can do from here. And we will walk away with a W despite that uh, horrible triple 80% hit chance of uh, make it rain missing. That pretty sucked. <laughs> that pretty sucked. What grammar is that? That sucked pretty bad, is what I meant to say. So, lastly, we have the very last guy who is kind of a pain in the rump, but actually is straightforward. Uh, there is two ways you can do this. Uh, the most noticeable way, which I've seen a lot of people doing, is soloing him with the Accursed Hexer, but you can also solo him with the Blossoming Ancient. Um, I'm not too sure which one takes the longest time, but both of them will end up letting you win the match um, I mean not everyone's going to have an accursed texer but most people will have a blossoming ancient because it is the best pet probably on the uh, pet store well one of the best pets I would say but we do have them both there nonetheless uh, backline pets you're definitely going to want to have are two elementals so yeah let's go ahead and hop into this <clears throat> he is slow as crap so you won't have to worry about that we're going to go ahead and lead off with weakness. He does have a crap ton of AoE. So whenever you can, you're going to want to go ahead and go for your drain blood. As it will do a crap ton of damage to him, as you can see right there. And just keep weakness up on him as much as you can. He will do damage to himself over time with one of these abilities. I'm pretty sure it's Mega Discharge. Alright, from here, go for a Chaos Beam. All right, go for another weakness. And he will miss sometimes, apparently, from the looks of things. All right, we're going to go for another drain blood. I'm going to do that as soon as you can. You will basically pop back up to full health because he has just so much health, as you can see. And go for another weakness here. All right, let's go for a little Chaos Beam. We're doing extra damage to him this turn. He's going to be doing some damage to himself as well. Go for another Weakness. And we'll go for Drain Blood now. <coughs> Unfortunately, this is the longest part of the pet dungeon, so totally can go and grab yourself a snack or something because, uh, it will take a moment to finish him off, but you will slowly but surely win. Like I said, you can do this with the Blossoming Ancient too. Pretty much all you're going to want to do is go straight for your Sunlight and Photosynthesis as soon as you can. Keep Iron Bark up on you as much as you can as well. That way you can reduce as much of this damage as possible. And you will walk away with the W, just like you will with the Accursed Hexer. Alright, let's go for this weakness right here. We've got him. 
below 3,500 now, so we're whittling him down slowly but surely. As long as we keep our little weakness up on him. Alright, let's go for another drain blood. <coughs> Alright. Ooh, accidentally went for a chaos beam right there, but I don't think it'll really matter all too much. Um, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and go for a weakness. Normally right there, you would go for a chaos beam, that way you'll do extra damage, but I'm just going to play it safe even though he missed. I <laughs> accidentally went for a chaos beam. Alright, take him down right there. There goes his mechanical racial, and now all there is is uh, 2,000. Oh, uh, well. It did decrease right there, but just over 2,500. So now we're going to go ahead and go for another weakness. Alrighty, let's go for our drained blood right here. Pop straight back to full health. We'll go for that. We're going to go for another weakness in just a second as soon as he's done damaging himself. And uh, we will walk away with the W. <clears throat> okay, and I think right here we can just basically go for a chaos beam, right? I don't think it really matters. Okay, and yep, he killed himself. Alright, he almost took down the accursed hexer right there, but uh, yeah, there we go. Pretty uh, straightforward stuff, and from here, oh, he called him a piece of junk. Well, that's not nice. <laughs> she asked if you have some bigger hammers. Ah, uh, that's funny. So yeah, from here, you can basically go ahead and leave the instance. You have completed the dungeon. As far as the three little pet rewards that you have, for the, uh, with the little currency that there is, all three of the pets aren't very good. Oh yeah, and upon completing the hard mode, I believe you get two toys. If I'm not mistaken, which are pretty cool. Unfortunately, don't get a uh, pet reward with the achievement like you would normally, but I don't know what Blizzard was thinking there. But anyway, the three pets that you can purchase with a little currency, all three of them are pretty bad, but I would say that the best one out of all of them is definitely the Wailing Lasher. Uh, these two mechanicals are just pretty bad. Tiny Claw has less than 1200 health. Uh, it is pretty cool that he does have rain dance though. In experiment 13, it's Bree, it's, oh, I was about to say Bree, it's Breed is a complete lie. It says SS Breed, which is, means it's supposed to be fast, but it only has 276 speed, so I won't really bother wasting your time getting that unless if you just want to collect it just for the laws. That's completely up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and purchase the Wailing Lasher for the first time. And, uh, yeah, call that a day. But, um,. Yeah, let me go ahead and heal my pets up before I forget. But yeah, here are all the teams again. Really hope you guys enjoyed and that this could help you out. Once again, this is the hardcore mode. You can do this on the easy mode too. At least then you will have some bandages and all that good stuff to help you out along the way. But um, this is basically the route you're going to want to go if you are doing the hard mode, like I said. Uh, again, this is inside of the Black Rock Mountain. And uh, yeah. Really hope you guys enjoyed. Really hope this could help somebody out. This is Kofak, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.